Not really. I hope not. Welcome back to another episode of Alone Together. Today is Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday. It is April 5th, 2020. I don't know how many days into the quarantine we are for where you're at, but I think it's like day 10 or something for us here in California. It might even be longer than that. It seems like it's been a year already. Uh, It is Sunday, so I don't know how well our attendance is going to be on the live stream. If you are watching, please take a moment to chime in, comment, leave questions. Uh, engage with us, me and my brother pastor um, that I'm about to introduce to you. Let us know you're watching and uh, any questions or comments you may have, we want to know, we want to be able to have this conversation. We're all in isolation. This is going to be a 15-minute isolation conversation. I'm going to put 15 minutes on the clock as soon as uh, Pastor Paul and I get talking. That way you know we will honor your time and we won't keep going, especially if you know you got to run off to church online probably, when this is over. So, at least the commute won't be long. Without further ado, let me introduce you to our guest. It is the Reverend Preston Paul from St. Matthew uh, Lutheran Church in Almino, Wisconsin. How are you, Brother Paul? Fantastic. Thanks for having me, Terrell. Absolutely. Let me put 15 minutes on our clock, and then I want to check in with you and see how uh, the Saints are doing. Here we go. 15 minutes, and we're off and running. Tell me about St. Matthew. Well, I'm going to tell you about St. Matthew and Silver Creek. I have a dual parish, but St. Matthew is the uh, larger congregation in town, Almina. Uh, They're just a wonderful people. Uh, um, I'm having the time of my life here in in Almina and at at the two congregations, St. Matthew and Silver Creek. Silver Creek is a a smaller congregation out in the country. Um, Tell you about them. They're they're God's people. And... uh, they, uh, in an amazing way, love me most of the time. <laughs> in an amazing way? What does I, uh, that in mean? In an amazing way, and I love them most of the time, too. <laughs> and uh, we, get, we, get, we get along great. Um, God is good here. So what was, the, what was the culture of the church pre-pandemic? What did life at um, both those congregations look like before this crisis hit us? Well, normal Midwestern, podunk, redneck, Lutheran, <laughs> my um, kind of people, dual parish, dual parish life. Uh, um, they well, hopping busy. We did a lot of midweek stuff going on and fun stuff. You know, our Wednesdays were, were plump full, and our Sundays between the two churches were plump full too. <clears throat> so, normal, great stuff. <clears throat> Wonderful. Well, right now we have uh, Julie Sheps says she's watching uh, from Almina, Turtle Lake. Sheep. Oh, I'm sorry. Sheep. Julie Sheep. She's one of my sheep. Oh, She's one of your chefs. sheep. Julie Sheps, one of your she, sheep. All right. She's one of my chef's sheep. <laughs> That's fun. Thanks, Julie. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Um, I really appreciate it. We also have uh, Kathy Sweet from Chico, California. She's tuning in with a blessed Palm Sunday message to you, Pastor. So, uh, thank you to you too, Kathy. Well, what does life look like now, post pandemic? What kind of uh, things are you guys struggling with in your particular context? Uh, struggling with, um, well, it's or upside navigating. down. It's navigating. It's completely different. Um, we made, I made uh, uh, the decision that we're not meeting together at all. Uh, we are, but we're able to stream audio with uh, our program that we have every day. So we have daily services being streamed out at various times and, that has turned out to be such a wonderful blessing. Um, and just going through all this, there's no doubt in my mind that in the end, that our congregations are going to be blessed through this isolation and suffering. I have no doubt about it. I see it already. And um, people are hungering and thirsting for, for being together and hungering and thirsting for his sacrament. Yeah. And that's by design, what God ordained. Right. So uh, it, yeah. the challenge is, is, the big challenge is, is I think I'm, I, we, we have a fun thing real quick is that we um, when we're streaming live, I want people to check in. So they send me a text because they, they, they hear me. I want to see them. So they text me and say, hey, we're here, Pastor. And so I know who's out there. Is that distracting so I want, while you're streaming, uh, streaming live? Not a very distractible person, Tyrell. Oh, okay. 
that's great. Like, right in the middle of your sermon, you'd be like, well, no, no, Julie am, is texting you. So. But no, no, it, no, they're just texting me on the side, and I can, well, at the beginning of the service, not during. <laughs> uh, like one time, my text, my text blew up when I forgot to turn the mic on. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. But uh, they, uh, <clears throat> they, they, I let them know there, and it also helps me to know who have the ability to join us but aren't. And the beautiful thing I love about it is we're doing it together at the same time. They're not going later to to, to listen to it or yeah. going later to watch it. We're worshiping and praying at the same time. I love it. That's awesome. It's uh, listen to church.com if you want to check out the service we're using. What is it? Say it one more time. I think it's listen to church.com. We just updated our service and started it last week and we have been getting great, great reviews back from people. Okay. I can do it right from my, my, uh, my iPhone and my iPad. Interesting. Okay, listen to church. Yeah, we're doing it right. We're doing we're doing a lot of the services right from the uh, church parsonage. Great. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. And yeah. so, uh, are all your members able to navigate that technology? Is that something? Have you been able to? I would say most. Yeah. Good question. Because there's a link and a phone number that they can go on either way. So they can. Some of them will use the link, and then a number will use the the phone number. So, yeah, the by far the majority, if not all. I think of a few individuals that are just not um, uh, capable uh, of doing that, but m most of them can dial in or link up. And so we have shut-ins in the nursing homes, we have shut-ins at homes, and then we have our normal members that can dial in. Or we're all together at the same time. I love it's wonderful. It. I love it. I think I even like it better than being able to see visually. I think I, I do too. It's a, there's a focus on the word. Yeah. It does take pressure off the pastor to act. Right. Like right. You know, and they don't. They don't have to see this mug. Right. And I know a lot of people are like, hey, Pastor, let's do video. I'm like, no, this is working great. I think that's yeah. Yeah, great. Yeah, it's, huh. it works really, really well. And, and um, Listen I know we're going to use this com. system far into the future. Sorry. No, I'm sorry. Listen to church.com. Just trying to get it correct one more time. I believe that's what it is. Okay. And you and I can touch base and can put yeah. it on that your feed okay, I'll, later. I'll uh, verify. I'll post it on my my uh, Facebook wall for anybody who's watching. Uh, on this On this video, I will leave a comment with the link. Once we figure out exactly right. what it is, but that's probably right. app you can down. There's an app you can download that works right on your 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 uh, iPhone, or iPad, or I guess Android too. But I wouldn't know that. So. <laughs> me, me neither. <laughs> um, hey, so what? As far as the government, as far as the state of Wisconsin, how have things been going? How uh, amenable have they been toward the church and things like that? Um, you know, just they, they they're treating us. They're not treating us as uh, a, an essential. Thing, but at the same time, I've like I sold some brothers. I don't want them to consider us essential because if they consider us essential, they would consider us essential for the wrong reasons. Mm. You know, we're essential. Be we know why we're essential. Right. They don't. Right. And if they think we're essential, then they should be here. But they think us we're essential because we are, offer some sort of community service, which we should. But we offer far more than that. We know why we're essential. That um, and we're not essential. Thought. Why they think they are. Uh, that was why they think we are, but um, they, you know, so they, sh you know, limited to ten a few weeks ago, um, in a gathering, and I think it's, I think it's maybe May, May first or something now. I'm not sure at this point, but we're just going, going for the ride right now, and, but, um, yeah, they haven't treat, they haven't uh, treated us differently by yeah. any means, okay. and we're just obeying the fourth commandment stuff, as you know, brother, and uh, and then at the same time the fifth commandment and. And not wanting to be a means of, of hurting or harming our neighbor and his body. Yeah, isn't it interesting this balance we're trying to find between fourth, fifth, and even third commandment? Because the danger, right, of, of not uh, wanting to honor the Sabbath day, just getting into it. I just sent out an email to, to my members with the link to our service for this morning and mm -hmm. took the time to, to kind of give a little instruction of, you know, protect your Sunday morning routine, protect your, your church habit okay. uh, with, you know, um, Second Timothy one, where Paul t tells Timothy to guard the good deposit. You know, we got to be on guard right. in this time that we don't slip into a bad habit of, right. well, now Sunday morning is uh, pancakes and coffee oh, in my pajamas. Right. You know, no, you can't bring your lazy boy with you. <laughs> I, I just had a, a, a back to church, uh, and also, you know, I just had a mom tell me today that they're going to have to retrain their toddler that they can't dance during the liturgy <laughs> <laughs> uh, when they come back to church. So no liturgical yeah, it, it, dance in uh, St. Matthew. It, it, no, yes. So that, <laughs> but uh, so things will change when, when we come back to, together. We got to guard and protect that. But I will say, I mean, praise the Lord for our Lutheran confessions and our teaching because we have the best context and the best on how, how to to make sense of all of this. Yeah. 
I wouldn't want to be anything but Lutheran in making sense of this. Yeah, that's right. So on yeah. that note, have you noticed, yeah. maybe you haven't even paid attention, but how are the other denominations in your towns doing? How are they faring? Have you heard? I have no <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. And that's, that's just, I'm not necessarily, I'm paying attention to my brother, my, my, you know, my LCMS brothers and we're communicating what, what, what we're doing and stuff, but I, I haven't checked in. Maybe yeah. I should have, but I, well, I haven't. I was, asking, I was asking another brother if he thought that sacramental churches had a better or worse sort of time of all of this because of our emphasis on the Lord's Supper. And, you know, are we feeling a, a hit if we're not able to gather more so than those who, you know, it's just a symbol for them. It's just, you know, it's just a representation and it's not as meaty. So I, absolutely. I don't, I don't absolutely. A absolutely. Hands down, because we have we have the reason to gather. Right. We have the reason. They don't. Yeah, <laughs> we do. Praise the Lord. Exactly. And, and right. absolutely. It's like I said, you know, I know some churches are trying to some creative things, but the Lord has chosen ordained to take the altar away from us right now. And let us heed that. And we, we have a place, and now we don't have that place right now, according to his um, or, uh, ordaining desire under the cross, and it is for our good. Yeah, that's right. I, I think this is a valuable lesson, especially for American Christians. I know the, the church across the planet is dealing with the coronavirus, too. Um, right. I don't want to be you know, egocentric, and it's just an American problem, but it is an interesting American problem for the church, I think, with regards to our comfort and how how comfortable we've got with the with the gifts our Lord has given us, how much we take them for granted. Best way to take it is take it away. <laughs> yes, and how much I pray that that God's people are learning just how valuable these treasures are, and not to take them to for be, granted in the future. To be humbled, absolutely, right. and uh, He has done this. But interesting, He has taken that gift away, but He has forced us to the gift nearest in our homes. Because we had forsaken that too, and so the Lord is doing a, a twofer here. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, and he never he's, telling, he's not leaving us. He's not leaving us just uh, completely without his without his guidance and care. I mean, we always have the Word, right? The Word is still there, but there's a little yeah, bit so. of uh, maybe a pullback, or I don't know how you would want to accurately describe it, but that inability yeah. to get to the I, supper. I, I, Eucharistic fast. Yeah, he's put us in a Eucharistic fast. Yeah. And right. it is good. How's the family doing? I mean, just because this is part of this check in is also you're checking with the congregation, but also yeah. checking with the pastor and the missus and the family, mm -hmm. depending on who I'm talking to. So, how's your family? My family is doing great outside of dealing with me, um, hands down. <laughs> and uh, they, 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 no doubt that uh, people don't realize this, but I'm, you know, working more diligently and harder and more specifically. This is all new for everybody. I'm learning technology I don't want to learn. Right. Um, and so they, you know, my, my family is no doubt getting a little brunt from Papa here. And, and you know, um, and my uh, they're, they're the choir during our streams. And wow. I am blessed with uh, my uh, girls having just gorgeous voices. They take after their mother. So they're, they're, they're joyful, but they're uh, having to be awful patient with, with, with uh, me. A lot uh, more um, dad time. Well, they get a lot of dad time in general, probably too much, but because uh, I live right across the street. Yeah, no you know, such work, thing you know, as too much dad time. Not in America. No. We need more of that. <laughs> well, my kids have a different American experience. Let me tell you, they homes we homeschool, so uh, they cool. have a different American experience um, than that. But yeah, they're doing well, and uh, it's a good. It's been a good thing for us too. I mean, uh, we we've always had family meals, but now we get more, and it's going to be a good time for our family. Great. And is, would you say the same for all your members with, with families? Are they? Oh, no, I wouldn't because they're in a different context. You know, you got some families that, you know, their, their kids are suddenly come home, <laughs> you know, and that's a, that's a, that's turned their world upside down, understandably. And adjusting to that, uh, you know, some people are, are far more lonely now because they can't have visitors. And so us pastors are working very hard to make phone calls and whatever means in you know, in sending out videos to the members or whatever oh, yeah. to to connect. And no, I, I think some of the young families are are they're in a tough spot because suddenly mom and dad are home or dad dad's home and the kids are all home and that can be immensely stressful. Yeah, um, they're not all day long. So right, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm not a fan of these, but you see this kind of talk, you see it online, or you. You hear it from people in passing about how, um, you know, once husband and wife are 
if they're not at work, right, it's the work that saves the marriage kind of thing because when they're together, you know, it wouldn't be a good thing. And now they're you, you're kind of hearing some. I ha, I have been hearing these kind of jokes and these little these little things about right. dealing with. And, the, what, and I think it's horrible. I hate it. It's, it is, it's very sad. It's our American line of thinking. Yeah, it's, it, it's horrible. Yeah. And it, there's no doubt a relationship that spends time together is a relationship that's going to demand more work. Yep. It, you know, that, and that's just the reality of it. So I'd rather I'd rather work at it and spend more time with them. That's right. Amen. Well, we have a minute so, and twenty seconds. I'm going to yes, give sir. you. I'm going to give you that minute to uh, leave us with a, probably something from the Psalms, something positive, something in, encouraging okay. in the middle of all of this. Um, I didn't do our Bible verse, and the more, and the, usually I've been kicking off with a Bible verse, um, and I was kind of thinking of Zechariah nine from the one year lectionary, and and I had on on my mind this morning the prisoners of hope, you know, the prisoner language because we all kind of feel like prisoners in our own home. But what would you we leave do. us with, Pastor? Well, I, I point you to Psalm 37 for one, but I'm going to go to Psalm 119. But Psalm 37, um, uh, be still and know that the, the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who, who prospers in his way, over the man who carries evil devices. And I can't see it right now, but somewhere it says here, um, fret not yourself because it only leads to evil. Fretting leads to evil. And that's a great psalm because it helps us to learn, uh, <clears throat> pushes us into seeing what God has done and what God is doing. But in Psalm 119 is a great place to go to ponder and, and meditate on the on the gift of, gift of God's word. And I believe it's here in, in Psalm, uh, if I can see it, there it is, beginning at verse 65, 60, somewhere in there. Um, the, uh, if I can find it, there it is. It is good for me, verse 71, it is good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. It was good that it was afflicted. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. Oh, and so wow. the, God, the Lord keeps on knocking us upside the head. It's thank you, Lord, you big jerk. I mean, I love you. <laughs> um, and, then, and then finally, um, in verse 75, uh, it says, I know, O Lord, that your just decrees are righteous. And that anytime you hear that word righteous, it's Jesus. I know that you give me Jesus, you're righteous, and that in faithfulness, in truth, you have afflicted to me. So God has done it, and God is good. I love that. Thank you for that. Absolutely. I don't know about you, you out there at home or wherever you're at. Oops, I just got a notification on my phone. Sorry about that. Um, I know. I don't know about you, but I needed to hear that. I think we all need to hear that in these times. The Lord is working in this. Um, when we are afflicted, it draws us back to him, um, and we, we recognize what he's doing. The time is up, my friend. So sorry to have to say goodbye already. 15 minutes just goes by like that on this show. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I will talk with you in just a little bit. Hang on. Don't go anywhere. And let's uh, let's talk to you at home. I want to ask you, what are you going through? What are you dealing with? What kind of questions or thoughts are you wrestling with? What kind of advice or suggestions? Let's make this a community effort. You see here on the screen this way. Uh, if you're on Facebook, you can follow, you can like, you can heart. And on uh, YouTube, if you're watching this after the fact, you can subscribe and ring the bell and give it a thumbs up and all that good stuff. But notice what's underneath both of those. Comment. Leave a comment. Let us know. Uh, just like yesterday, I was reading on one of the previous videos, someone asked, how are you dealing with funerals? And I haven't had to do a funeral yet, but I do know that tomorrow's guest, uh, the Reverend Trampy, Heath Trampy in Minot, North Dakota, he has done a funeral. I noticed that on his Facebook feed. So tomorrow we'll be asking him how he navigated a funeral in the midst of all of this. But please, leave comments on these videos. Let us know what's going on. I'm still looking at all of them, and we want to be able to engage that and think it through. It's really helpful for pastors because, you know what? I hadn't really thought about what I would do if a funeral happened right now, and that helps me get prepared. Anyways, I will see you tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel, at Tyrell Bramwell, alone together, 9 a.m. Pacific time. Oh, I'm very thankful to have my pastors join me, especially on a Sunday. This is, we're still working. It is still a day for us to uh, be doing our duty. And so thank you, Pastor Paul, for taking the time to join me today. We will see you guys tomorrow. God's blessing.